stream is live! You ready? Hi everyone! Princess Wi-Fi here, and welcome back to my channel. Call me Coco. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Pacific Ocean. My name is Karen. I am the Mermaid Princess of the Antarctic Ocean. My name is Noelle, and I am the Mermaid Princess of the Arctic Ocean. I am the pretty Agarian who fights for love and for courage. I am Sailor Jupiter. I'll feel you regret. It'll leave you numb. My name is Sarasa. I am Ichi's sister. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm Roka, and I am Sarasa's sister-in-law. My name is Kisasoma. The animal in the zodiac that I symbolize is the tiger. Call me Hirosoma. The animal that symbolizes the zodiac is the sheep, and that is me. A fine pleasure to meet you. My name is Kotoko. My name is Amu Hinamori. I can transform into Amulet Heart, Amulet Spade, Amulet Clover, Amulet Diamond, Amulet Angel, Amulet Devil, and Amulet Fortune. Hello, my name is Plutia. I can transform into Iris Heart. My name is Vert. I can transform into Green Heart. I am Nico Robin, a treasure hunter. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Kami. I am Ochako Uraka. Let's go! Hey, hey! Nice to meet you! Call me Nejere Hato! I am Itsuka Kendo. Pleasure to meet you. What's up? I'm Black Star! Hi there, it's me. I'm Nozomi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Call me Mavis. I'm pleased to meet you. I am the head of the Furude family. Rika Furude. I am Kaname Chidori. It's a pleasure. My name is Hestia. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi there, I'm Machi. Nice to meet you. I am called Rola. Be grateful, I'm not giving you any punishment. I am La Pucelle. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Sister Nana. Nice to meet you. I'm Rico. Great to meet you. My name is Snow White. Pleasure to meet you. About us, I'm Nagisa One. And I'm Nagisa Two. What's up? I'm Boruto. It's a pleasure. My name is Hikaru Shido. I represent the element of fire. My name is Fu Hoji, and I represent the element of wind. I'm Umi Ryuzaki, and I represent the element of water. Hi, I'm Happy. I'm an Xseed from Xtalia, and a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. Good day, I'm Carla. I am an Xseed as well, and... We are also in the Fairy Tale Guild. Hey there, I'm Wendy Marvel. I'm a Sky Dragon Slayer. My name is Romeo Combolt. I'm the only son of Fairy Tale's mage, Macau Combolt. And I'm a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild. <laughs> I'm Hanon Hosho. I am the Mermaid Princess of the South Atlantic Ocean. Glad to meet you. I'm Rina Toyn, and I am the Princess of the North Atlantic Ocean. Hiya, I'm Manatsu. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Ari. Nice to meet you. Call me Pony Sumotori. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Denki, and I'm the handsome one. I am Xiaome. It's a pleasure. Hello! I'm dead! Hey, I'm Julia. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Nayuki. Nice to meet you. I'm Hanyu for the day. And I'm Ayu Tsukimiya. Nice to meet you. My name is Lucas Klein, everyone. And this is my friend Haro. Adam, that's you too. I am glad to make your acquaintance. I am Sarada. My name is Kotome Ichinose. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'll promise to do my best on my violin. I am Yukine. It's nice to meet you. I am Pikachu Popstar. My songs will reach out to all of you. Pikachu PhD is in the house. My prescription? Knockout. Hi, I'm Rena Ryuku. You look so cute. I want to take you home with me. I am called Alpha Five. It is a great pleasure to make your acquaintance. They often call me Sayuri. Nice to meet you. I am Kaori. Please don't upset me. Futaba Sakura here. Nice to meet you. I'm Taleta. Nice to meet you. I am Melissa Shield. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And I am Jasmine, leader of the Olivine City Gym. Pleased to meet you. I'm 
Reiki Nishimura, a sophomore going for my BS. My mineralogy club meets next door. So hi there, neighbor. You heard that? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Hey there, I'm Taru Hagakure. Hi everyone, here's your homegirl Mimi. With the pulsating power of a driving disco rhythm, comes the queen of the buggy beat. I tribute summon Diane Kito, the buggy master. Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly. Hi everyone, it's Kimberly. Hi, um, I'm Jasmine, a gym leader. Hi, I'm Princess Mimi Tachikawa. <laughs> and I'm Coraline. <laughs> so let's get the show on the road. This year marks the fifth anniversary of Tekken 7 and now we're going to have a recap of what happened. We'll be adding in parts that we forgot in the last 2020 videos. For some reason, let's go over the brief history lesson on the development of Tekken 7. It was first announced by Tekken director Katsuhiro Harada on July 13, 2014 during EVO 2014. He first revealed the trailer and unveiled a new logo for the series. It began when Harada found out the title was leaked online. The game wasn't originally to have been unveiled too soon, but the announcement was brought forward due to the leak. Along with the confirmed development of Tekken X Street Fighter, an extended launch trailer, character design details, and other info regarding the game was revealed at their San Diego Comic Con fighting panel on July 25, 2014. Tekken 7 uses, makes use of the Unreal Engine 4 game engine which will allow the game to be developed for multiple platforms. Bandai Namco was unable to show the gameplay system at their San Diego Comic Con at the time due to it still being worked for. It was stated by Harada that the arcade release of Tekken 7 would have network features very similar to Tekken Tag Tournament 2. There are several guest artists who have worked on the character design series. Said artists include Marty Shimazaki, Bayonetta, Yusuke Kozaki, Fire Emblem Awakening, No More Heroes, Nin Nin, Duel Masters Card Fight, Vanguard, and Kenny Chido Yoshimura, Max Anarchy, and Ar Anarchy Reigns. Also, Shinji, Shinji Aramaki is directing the intro for Tekken 7, and the game also focuses on one-on-one -on -one battles like previous numbered installments, not team-based as in the Tekken Tag series. And Tekken 7 had a game arcade version test on Japan in October 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Tekken 7 has also two new systems, and Akitaka Toyama returned to compose the soundtrack. Now with everything said, you all already knew the plot of Tekken. If you haven't, please be sure to check out the recap of events before and Tekken's 1 through 6 from the last videos from 2020. Now let's take a look at the plot of Tekken 7. <laughs> Following the events of Tekken 7, the 6th King of Iron Fist tournament was caught off due to Jin's absence. Safina took Azazel's orb and decided her clan to perform the ritual similar to Miriam from Bloodstained. The being was sealed inside her body and was transferred in her body and following this she became a Malfested, similar to Mistress 9 eating Ch Chibiusa's Silver Crystal. And so long as we have the legendary Silver Crystal. No one can stop us. We've got nothing to fear. <laughs> Amazing! Such power! I can feel it welling up from deep within my body. This energy... It fills me to the brim! Sagato! <gasps> One hour later. It just don't add up! No, they do not, Hector! <laughs> and I slaughtered them like animals! I hate them! Lydia called the Zaibatsu to call off the Tekken Force units, but Heihachi sent her an invitation to the Seven Tournament to come meet him. Leroy decided to find Heihachi and fight him for justice for his people that was slaughtered in the time! Pokemon was sent into the Seven Tournament to 
rescue his wife and daughter, have ever sent his country. Nay, Wulong was sent to investigate the G-Corp following his failure to arrest Yen and meet his idol lucky Chloe. The unnamed reporter, for the sake of this video, we'll call him Josh, is investigating the Mishima family feud. Nina Williams, who is waiting for their leaders to return since the last game, begins a massive search for Jin Kazama. Meanwhile, Heihachi regained his strength and after going to hiding since Tekken 5 and Tekken 6 and decided to take back the financial group. He went Napoleon on their asses and after that Nina accepting to work with him. As soon as that happens, he announced to the entire world that he is alive. And everyone knew it was a miracle since the Jack 4 attack! And I'm not to see the entire world that the King of Iron Fist Tournament has once again returned and offered not only 47 million dollars! But who will take over for the company? Kazuya was not surprised and amused about his father's return and in the desert, Lars is looking for his half-brother in the Middle East. Lay down the road. After going to the Cyrus Marksman HQ and beating up Claudio Serafino and showed him Jin's devil form, Heihachi decided to change his plans of becoming immortal with Ogre's blood to exposing his son and grandson. In hopes of turning public opinion to the MFG. Later that same evening. The United Nations helicopter decided to take Jin to their HQ to recover from his fight. But with the god, but then... Jin transformed and blew up the helicopter, killing everyone. Raven did not die, but is injured in the process. Meanwhile, The Zaibatsu were planning on revealing the devil to the world, but to do that, they only needed Jin and Claudio. Said the devil gene is more powerful than ever, but they have heard that something inhuman has appeared in the Middle East. A few minutes later... Jin was wandering in the desert, and UN cops told him to freeze, but he activated his devil gene! Since that got a riot after arriving in the marketplace, his rival, Horang, showed up and found him and fought him with everything he had and since the Middle East people heard of a beast was on a rampage. But, after seeing Yotsil's just throw a grenade, Horang threw a gin and saved his life in the process and he ran away! As for Horang, he actually lost his right eye and he fainted off screen as he changed his appearance. After Warang saved his life, Jin was about to be apprehended once again. Lars found him and took him to Violet Systems to recover from the Azazel incident. The Zaibatsu learned that Jin was captured. They were indeed planning to send a search team, but there were no points since they had to stay one step at a time and following this, Kazuya ordered Jack 6, Jack 7, and Gigas for the tournament. A few moments later... Ling Xiaoyi was looking for Jin since she found out that her grandfather is alive, and so she went to the Zaibatsu to find Jin since he was the leader of one point. She creeped under the enemy territory and under the guard's nose as she heard her grandfather's voice about Jin. Just as she was about to tell her grandfather to stop this, like Hanan protecting Mitsuki from Sara. Then Claudio stopped her just as he was about to call security. And Zhao demanded to be taken to Jin at once. He took her to the roof and battled her. She overpowered Claudio and won the battle and told him that she was not some little girl. Claudio and allows her to come with her and Zhao Yu was so excited like Zhang Hua reuniting with Kellogg at the end of Soul Calibur 4. And by this time, Claudio tells her to be serious and Ling is ready to find her boyfriend, despite that she is unaware of Claudia's true plan.
ma dovrai essere pronta. Bene. Era quello che volevo sentirti. Eventually. Come desideri, puoi unirti a me. Credo che sarai un'ottima esca per la mia parte. Oh. Dead, not big surprise. Two hours later. Panda entered the tournament to find her master, but encountered Paul Phoenix. She is enraged to find her master since she wants her home. So the battle was fierce, and Paul lost the battle. She senses Xiao Yu Sen and decides to look for her. As a result, she dropped from the tournament. This took place before Paul went with Marshall to fight Feng Wei. Lan is keeping an eye on Elisa. She woke up, but attacked him during the fight. She remembers everything, and she feels real tears after the short-lived reunion Tekken Force units crashed the party. The two of them fought off, and they escaped. A few moments later... Yoshimitsu noticed that something went bad after Heihachi's return to the living. He investigated the Mishima Dojo to find the old man, and he demanded answers. A few minutes later... Leia. The ambiguous non-binary individual arrived and fought Yoshi and he is defeated and then decides to continue her mission about their mom. <laughs> this took place before Heihachi returned to the dojo to meditate and before Akuma's arrival. Was is this for ending? Ein Tintenfisch? Ein Octopus? Ein Ninja? Also dieser komische Typ, bei dem alle reden. Japan ist so verrückt. Nein, ich muss mich auf meine Mission konzentrieren. Bis später, komischer Octopus-Typ. Yoshimitsu heard Heihachi's footsteps and fled away before he could toss him. If it weren't for those meddling kids. <laughs> Yoshi encountered... Kunimitsu the second and challenged her for the sake of her grandfather's sword, and that story will conclu conclude in Tekken 8. Six and a half hours later. Kuma the second, after finally reuniting with his master, is officially happening, and it has been officially promoted to the Tekken Force. He began working vigorously as an officer and performed various tasks. According to Paul's character episode, Kuma took part in the seventh tournament, but. He ended up dropping out mysteriously. And let's take a look at his new mission. Hey, hey! He was sent to the Philippines on the pretext of helping out with relief efforts and after a monstrous typhoon in the area. With the Zaibatsu's financial clout behind him, Kuma and the others visited the stricken areas, gaining the trust of the locals. Before long, local youths, jobless after the disaster, came forward asking to join the Tekken Force. A recruitment test was quickly established, and many young hopefuls went to the test in deep, the location deep in the jungle. And unbeknownst to them, the final test was a fight none other than Kuma himself. Some buckled under the pressure and quit. Others were eliminated. But in the end, one candidate remained. A young, athletic woman named Josie Rizal. A kickboxer and supermodel. She cried when she saw the grizzly bear. Kuma had no choice but to complete the assignment. 
the battle was fierce, and Josie defeated him with ease. <laughs> you scared me! You came after me so you could give me this? Are you okay? Stay with me! What follows is a brief montage of others. While trying to pay for the hospital bills at Forest was in a traffic accident by Paul's bicycle marshal, and Paul headed to China to save Marshall's dojo and encountered Feng Wei Wu. Feng Wei. Two of them traded blows, but Fang got up with a mysterious aura as something similar to the Malfestin in Soul Calibur. Martial Law and Paul ran away, despite they wanted to pay for Forestville since Marshall wants his son to get better. Oh my be comedic in the next game but how could this be this isn't right several bad puns later bob richards was on in a hurry to the king of iron fist tournament to prove that he was the very best he encountered brian fury and defeated him with ease he used a speed and weight but the fall caused the floor to collapse and he fell into a chasm but don't worry he'll be fine King II is in serious trouble. After his comrade Krag Marduk and Armor King II was severely injured in a bloody battle, they were hospitalized. And King decided to enter the tourney for the medical bills, and after defeating Jack the Seventh, he is the runner up. Much, much, much later. Following the tourney, Craig Marduk attempted to finish him, but was stopped by King II when the masked wrestler had a deja vu seeing up upon seeing Marduk have been making the same mistake as King when he was brutally injured back in the fourth tournament. Armor King II soon awoke and he found a challenge letter for a retire match by Marduk, suggested by King II under his word to avoid bloodshed. The letter said that if Armor wins, Marduk might retire from fighting once and for all, and if Marduk wins, Armor King II must surrender the title of Armor King for the rest of his life, as well as removing his mask in disgrace. This will conclude in Tekken 8. Two hours later. After the death of the Capoeira Master, aka Christie's grandfather, Ho Chui Myung, Eddie decided to part ways with the Zaibatsu due to the failure to save Ho Chi due to the financial group's tech is far beyond saving the old man. 
Eddie decided to find Kazuya, who framed him for the murder of his parents, and get justice for his mother and father. However, a pop idol named Lucky Chloe, who was the sponsor for the G Corp, challenged her to a duel, and as a bet or deal, if Chloe wins, she will make Ed her backup dancer, and if Eddie wins, he will ask the idol where Kazuya is. Just then. As for Kirsty, she is in a coffee shop according to Harada. And thank you for the information, Moonsol. So five minutes later, Katarina lost her family at a young age before the events of the game. And after she rebelled on her adoptive family, she learned of the tournament and entered to fight a mysterious hulking figure, figure known as Gigas. After the fight, Gigas recognized her and G-Corp soldiers tried to shoot her, but Gigas sacrificed his life to save her and fell down a roof. <laughs> After doing well with Gigas in the tournament, Jack7 received a letter from Jane that now he is chief of the G Corp Humanoid Weapons Program and he did his happy dance. Chloe bumped into him while listening to her music, causing him to grab the letter and did a Looney Tunes styled fall. Aww. But he's okay. A few moments later. At the same plot, Shaheen was in search of someone who killed his close friend, who worked for a company and suspected it was foul play, but decided to find none other than Kazuya Mishima, and after battling him, he offered to work for him, but Kazuya refused, transforming into a devil, and flew away, and Shaheen vows for justice for his friend by arresting him for his crimes. <laughs> ومع ذلك سأختار طريق الرحمة بالقيام بذلك سيتم الإعفاء عني أيضا لعدم القيام بإنقاذ صديقي كازويا ما رأيك في العمل معي؟ ماذا؟ And finally, at the Arctic Snowfall, Master Raven fought Sergei Dragunov and decided to retrain Master Raven after beating him. But the battle was fierce, and Master Run and destroyed Sergei's missile, and he jumped away. 
This is the guy that gave Raven all that trouble? We hope you enjoyed this flashback. It was a long road, to be exact. But either way, Heihachi was training after Yoshimitsu and Leo fought, but as a 75-year-old man meditates in his dojo, he gets an unexpected guest. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! An unknown individual who worked with Kazumi was sent to the dojo to eliminate Heihachi and Kazuya. After they fought for a while and defeated the Jack-6 robots, the individual was identified as Akuma. He was sent to kill Heihachi and Kazuya on behalf of Kazumi. After firing a Hadouken, Ak Akuma believed him dead and Kazuya laughed of his own mother trying to kill him. <laughs> so Josh, a reporter went to Vile System and see Jin sleeping. He was about to pull out a screwdriver to kill him, but Lars wants to kill his half-brother too, but Jin is the key to end the war. I know. Tekken Force invades the Vile System's medical facility with Nina as their leader. She fought and now repaired Elisa. Lars and Lee fend off the attacking forces and Lee detonates the building. Nina is shown alive and defeated. Meanwhile at a French church. Anna Williams left G-Corp following the sixth tournament and was engaged to a G-Corp employee. And just as she was about to be married until death did them part, he was killed by Nina during her freelance following the Violet Systems raid after she failed to capture Jin after their fight. Steve Fox fought her and defeated her and demanded to know the truth about his existence and why he was ever created. So, we'll explain Steve's ending. We needed to point out that his ending is canon from Tekken Tag 2. It's the same thing with Leo. I said something about a mother's job to raise and protect her child, whether a son or daughter, after Steve's ending was most likely seen, because I wanted to make sure that it would all be okay. And I just really hope that the offspring can grow up well. With that being said, here is Steve's ending. My, My earliest memory is of a Mishima Zaibatsu laboratory. I don't even know who my parents are. The only one I remember is Dr. Cleason. She was always nice to me. I infiltrated the Mishima Zaibatsu and for several years siphoned out intel. Unfortunately, none of it really led anywhere. But your name did come up, time and time again. So tell me, what's your connection to the lab? To me! Those labs were used by the Mishima Zaibatsu to create super soldiers. Their goal was to physically and genetically engineer the ultimate soldier. Of course, it all ended in failure. But judging by your left arm, you must be one of the survivors. <sighs> At the time, the Mishima Zaibatsu had captured me and forced me into crimes. It's only recently that I discovered my genes were used in their experiments. Wait! So does that mean you are my mother? Don't, Don't get, get the, the wrong, wrong idea. idea. You'll never, never be my son. I couldn't I care less about you. you. If and anything, you're a thorn, thorn in my side. side. <laughs> get out of here. I'll, I'll take, take care of this. Akuma traveled to G Corp to find company. Hey, no! Lily called Asuka saying that the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7 is starting once again after Heihachi's announcement and the duo meet at the boxing ring arena to settle this once and for all. Lily was defeated by Asuka 
And after calling Sebastian, Lily will be moving into Oscar's house and learned about looking at her bio and as she is doing her ballet gymnastics dance. Oscar asked if this was a joke and the two of them left the arena. Hello? Sebastian? Oui, come preview. Ciao! A few moments later. Unfortunately, due to Heihachi suspending the tournament, nobody won the million dollar prize. And Heihachi survived the attack and decided to declare himself dead to the public and that the tournament was suspended. Until the next one is announced by Jin and Tekken 8. Hello, hello. Fakuram was this close to save his family and real Leroy will never get the chance to Heihachi. Excuse me. I have to go end it all. G Corp soldiers had their guns, and Kazuya told them to stand out. The reason why is that they were no match for them. Heihachi decided to broadcast the entire fight live across the world. So, as we said a few minutes ago, Kazuya is exposed on live natural television, and nobody's going to trust G Corp anymore. And have public opinion will be able to return to the Zaibatsu, and he decided to use the ultimate weapon by Dr. Abel. <laughs> oh, I've waited a long time for this! <laughs> Three hours later... Can you move it along? I'm all out of time, Kai. Heihachi won the battle and dismissed Claudio, much to his disgust, and called Heihachi a monster. But he holds Ling Xiaoyu hostage, and speaking with Zafina to stop the Azazel Kurtz as she slaughtered her own clan in a bloodbath. G Corp public have been turned against and they lost, but Kazuya told his bodyguard, Hey, he will get the last laugh. And so he went to the spot where the satellite was and destroyed it as a Retaliation. News had spread like wildfire and that the Mishima Zaibatsu downed its satellite, causing untold devastation and once more public opinion turning against them. What are you? My dreams? <sighs> this is the worst man made in history! <laughs> because of this, Santai Mishima's sentiments have grown across the entire planet. God bless! Damn it. Everyone soon forgot about Kazuya turning into the devil, and public opinion is once again back to G Corp as the world's savior. And thus World War IV has begun. So Josh had an interview with Heihachi, but the old man figured out he was working with laws. And after Heihachi's interview with Josh, it was time for the final battle. And after sending a location of the final battle, Brimstone and Fire, it's where it all had to end in the devil's pit. And you might have noticed, the final confrontation between the young man who got thrown off the cliff by his father, who believed to have killed his own mother in cold blood, and he himself fueled by rage, and the father, a bitter old man who was just wanting a family and blaming the devil Jean for taking away the person he cared most about in the entire world. His wife Kazumi and his action is fueled with sorrow, 
and he sees the sun turning into the being that took everything away from him, and two of them engaged in mortal combat. The final fight with Heihachi and Kazuya was extremely fierce and long, and when Kazuya turned into the complete devil, Heihachi is happy that he waited for this and he turned to Super Saiyan Blue, Kai Oken. But no matter how powerful his son is, no matter how you get, the great willpower he is once again failed like the first game in human form. <laughs> Eleven minutes later. While Kasumi does have an iron will, so does his son. Seeing not only his father, but the kill of his mother, which is why he uses all of his strength, the modicum more, to kill the king of Iron Fist, making the man fall into his death. Hachi Mishima was once a young man filled with happiness and love as he only cared to stay with his family, leaving nothing else and turning into a bitter spiteful old man blaming everyone around him for Kazumi's death, feeling sadness as he throws his own son down a cliff, disappointed that his grandson has a devil gene as well. Believing that the only way he can feel happy again is world peace, but through everything the devil always will return one way from his wife to his son to his grandson, creating a cycle of rage and sorrow, turning a loving husband into a murderous, feel-aside father. So Kazuya decided to bury his father into lava, so that way he will never return and become a skeleton. He did, however, remind himself of Heihachi's feelings. But suddenly, Akuma survived the satellite attack and will not rest until Kazuya is dead. The two of them fought until the Hakuden and Devil Blaster collided, causing the surrounding area of the volcano to explode. The outcome of the fight is unknown from now, but it is assumed that Kazuya defeated the Kuma and went to G Corp Hospital to rest and recover. <laughs> Oh, 
Top. Lee, Lars, and Elisa look at the city in ruins, despite Heihachi's death and the downfall of the Mishima Zaibatsu. G Corporation is not ending the war, and various regions are now facing invasion. Lars asks Jin as a request that he is the one that put the Earth in hell, and now Jin is going to atone for his sins, and the trio say to that he is the final hope to eliminate Kazuya. Due to the devil's blood running through his veins, it is up to him to save the world kill Kazuya, and end the war, and the Mishima bloodline once and for all. Yahari Jisha wa sensou wo tameru ki wa nai yo da. Hai, kakuchi de shinkou wo kaishi shite imasu. Kore ga Heihachi Nakia to no sekai da. そもそも世界にこの戦乱を引き起こしたのは貴様であるならばこれを収めるのもまた貴様の宿命あとはお前しかいないんだああ俺がやらねばデビルの力を持つ者としてカズヤは俺が殺す。And that concludes Tekken 7. So, we forgot about Eliza, this game's version of the Piranha Plant. We know that she was a vampire before the events of the series, but after taking a nap for 600 years since 1404, it took place before Soul Calibur, that starts 200 years before Soul Blade. But back to Eliza, after waking up for a centennial in in the 21st century, she decided to defeat Claudio, who, after taking Ling Xiaoyu as bait and talking to Zafina about getting rid of Azazel, defeated him and tasted his blood after she was about to finish him. Lily found her and realizes that she is her sister. Eliza doesn't buy it, and she is too young to be her sister as she was a thousand years old and four months ago. But despite it being 104 AD, but before she Eliza could finish, she fell asleep, and Lily reminded to her sister to drink some coffee and have less blood. <laughs> you call yourself an exorcist. <sighs> I'm here. 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 Yeah, right. I was born 1,000 years and 4 months ago. You're about a millennium too young to be... Hey! Hmm? Like I was saying, I slept a few centuries beneath your estate and... Réveille-toi! Ne t'avise pas de t'endormir en ma présence. You just don't shut up, do you? As I was saying, the De Rochefort family and I... Meanwhile at a battle zone. After Jin trained in gyms to prepare for the final battle and going back to Yakushima, Miguel found him because he wants revenge for his sister Natalia along with justice for his family since he is an orphan and then he goes for the kill. Jin asks to kill him but Miguel refused because he is not yet filled with hope and Jin was told that until he does that he will kill him until there is nothing left. No me reconoces? No. Supongo que no. 
Misimas Aibatsu mató a mi hermana en un ataque aéreo como si no fuera nada. Pero, Pero no, no ahora. Aún no ha sufrido lo suficiente como para merecer la muerte. No, todavía no. No hasta que estés lleno de esperanza. Entonces te mataré como si no fueras nada. No quiero que te vas a morir hasta que quieras. This is the end of Tekken 7. Please wait for more information at Tekken.com or Bandai Namco.com.